Okay, so the last thing that we're going to talk about for the immune system is the structures that we have. So here's a diagram or a picture from a textbook um, showing the primary lymphoid organs and then the secondary. Primary is really just this, the thymus and the bone marrow. Those are the primary. Everything else, the lymph node, the appendix, the lymphatics themselves, your spleen, payers, patches, all that stuff, that is the secondary lymphoid uh, organs. The only thing that I want to say about this is that the thymus when you're a kid is really large, really uh, big, because this is where T cells are developing. Um, pretty much after you, once you've hit puberty, your T cells are pretty much done, your immune system is pretty much well built uh, to the extent that it's going to be. Now, T cells are made, they're born in the bone marrow but raised in the thymus. But every other cell, B cells, dendritic cells, monocytes, uh, natural killer cells, neutrophils, these are born and develop in the bone marrow. Um, that's the only thing that I really wanted to say about that. But let's go into the anatomy, uh, or kind of the gross anatomy of, I'll switch to a different color, darker color like here. So you can't see it because for some reason it was cut off, but they have these things called afferent vessels. And I, I'm not really going to talk about the capillary exchange. I think that's more of a circulatory thing, but know that, yes, this is where this kind of comes from. Anyways, so once the lymphatic fluid delivers itself into here, I don't know why we didn't list, but there are macrophages, which I'm going to draw in blue like this, um, that kind of rest at the point where it drains in. And I want you to think about these macrophages as like bouncers for a, a, a club or something. They're just standing there guarding it, making sure that no intact pathogens get by. And then the outer region we have here, what you would probably want to put would be B cells in the lymphoid follicle. So there's a lot of immature B cells in here. And as we have stuff fluid rushing in through here, dendritic cells are coming in here. Um, and also, uh, certain pieces of it, but there's also macrophages in here for antigen presentation here. And this, this germinal center, which is I, it's uh, showing up, I'll switch colors to gold if I can, yeah, gold. So in the germinal center, this thing is, you can see it getting larger and larger and larger and larger. Over here it's diagrammed from this staining of it. Uh, what you have here is B cells that are being dealt with the pathogens. So B cells plus pathogen gives you a germinal center, and that's where it's producing all those antibodies and getting ready to differentiate, undergoing clonal selection. So for the inner areas here, and again, it's kind of getting cut off here, but I'll just go ahead and show you that this is kind of what I'm talking about here. This is the T cell region. So T cells are at the innermost portion, B cells are in the outermost portion. And as dendritic cells come through here, they're going to undergo antigen presentation, activating B and T cells. And I think there's another diagram um, elsewhere, ah, here we go, showing the that process that I talked about here. So here's a, just a, a gross anatomy of how many lymph nodes you have, and they're distributed all throughout your body. So you have a cut here. Um, this diagram is really nice because it shows the dendritic cells and macrophages at the site of the infection. And here we see the dendritic cells leaving the site of the infection, uh, diapodesing through to a lymph node. And here in green, these are uh, unspecified, not unspecified, naive uh, T cells, I believe, coming in. They're undergoing antigen presentation, and they're going to either, some of them are going to leave to fight off the, at the infection, but some of these T cells will also stay in the lymph nodes to help the B cells that are differentiating and to help the B cells doing their things as well. But I like this picture mostly because it shows this macrophage at the base here, kind of like a, a bouncer to, the, to the, the club, killing off any pathogens that, by the grace of God, may have gotten through. And that's what's leading me into this next slide. I kind of had these out of order, but, you know, work with me here. Um, there's this thing called a draining lymph node. So say you have an infection on your foot you're diabetic, I guess, or you cut your foot and you step on a nail. It's going to drain to the lymphatic nodes nearby. And all that I want you to know about lymph nodes is that rather than having our immune system spread thin, we have areas like lymph nodes where pathogens can literally just deposit into. And the, the advantage of that is if it's in a high concentration, I am telling you, everything really does come back to general chemistry concepts. So we have a high concentration of pathogens in the lymph nodes, 
this is going to lead to a high amount of collisions with the immune cells. They're essentially trapping these things in here to where B cells and dendrites and macrophages can all kind of converge in on them. And so a common sign of an infection, especially if you have like a, a respiratory type infection or an infection in your mouth, is swelling of your tonsils, which are actually mucosal based tissues, um, but also for swelling of the lymph nodes under your armpits. Um, the movie Black Death is actually a really good example of that, where of course Sean Bean dies at the very end and you see the swollen lymph nodes that he has because he had the plague and that's actually how we discovered lymph nodes but anyways this diagram just does a good job of showing it and I hope you see here that there's no lymphocytes in the veins for the most part um, and so how do we detect them well we have to use secondary structures here okay so for the spleen uh, I'm not even going to do a map for that I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about the spleen it has two parts of it there's the white pulp and then the red pulp and in the red pulp here is consists of predominantly that. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and map it just for the sake of discussing because the spleen is the very large lymphoid tissue and it has two really big jobs. So there's the red pulp and then there's the white pulp. The red pulp has two parts to it. Its main job is to um, destroy old red blood cells. So I'm going to say red blood corpuscles maintenance. And then recycling, that's my symbol for recycling, of both iron through more, we'll talk about that in anatomy and physiology, and uh, the globin part of your hemoglobin, which in this context is bilirubin. Now, the way that your spleen does destroy old red blood cells is by looking at the surface of them and it uses macrophages to break them down. But don't let this throw you off. The red pulp is not an immune structure. The white pulp is essentially a uh, big lymph node. I'm just going to say LN for lymph node. Um, the only difference is, whereas with the lymph node there was the afferent and efferent venule that, uh, Ugh. lymphatic ducts. In this, everything goes in and out the arteries and veins. But just like with the lymph node, there's B and T cells and macrophages, dendrites, and monocytes based up in there. So, here's a picture of the two parts here. And um, this is the red pulp, we're not going to talk about that so much as we are going to talk about the white pulp here. And just don't let all these terms kind of throw you off but just know that there's a germinal center here. There's a B cell. It's called the corona, but it's a follicle. Basically, the similar things there. You have B cells on the outside. You have T cells on the inside. And it's doing the same job. Now, uh, what this is really good for is killing pathogens in your bloodstream. Um, so a, a, large, a lot of concentration with treating malaria and getting malaria vaccination is focused around the spleen. I can tell you personally that uh, if you have mono, that is a, a virus that infects your B cells. If that infection gets really bad and you don't take care of yourself when you have mono, this can stress out your spleen. And your spleen can't do the job of recycling iron, which falls on the liver to detoxify, which can give you symptoms of hepatitis. And it can then swell and get to very large portions and actually rupture. So. My PSA for the day, if you have mono, don't play football, because that can make it rupture. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is the MALT. This stands for Mucosal Associated Lymphoid Tissue. It is exactly the same thing as a lymph node. It's just a little bit different structure to suit a different environment. And there's two subcategories of the MALT, and that is the GALT, Gut Associated Lymphoid Tissue, and then the BALT which is the bronchial-associated lymphoid tissue. So let's look at a picture of this. So here is a piece of the generalized epithelium. You could think of this, in this diagram, this is uh, the cross-section of your gut lumen, but this could be also associated with uh, bronchial-associated lymphoid tissue. They're very, very similar. So you have your epithelium. You have these things called M cells. Now what M cells do is they deliver pathogens. They, they literally 
trap pathogens. They lure them in here, say, hey, come over, there's a party over here at Imcel. And then all these pathogens come in, so they deliver the pathogens. In this context, I'm just going to say into the malt. Now, I don't know why it doesn't show this in here, but there are, I'm going to go ahead and just draw him in there as well, macrophages acting like bouncers, just like with the lymph nodes. We have dendritic cells here, but the roles are kind of reversed. We have T cells on the outside and B cells on the inside. But at the end of the day, what this is, is we're essentially dumping a lot of pathogens into a small area with a high concentration of T cells and B cells, 